So, um, as y'all know, this has been the Audubon Garden for the past couple of years. We've kind of taken it another step up. We're calling it Hummingbirds at Home, and I did want to introduce someone from the Audubon, Don Kinzior, who's staffs the garden. He's actually one of our speakers this year um, in the Festival Center. So, I just want to say a few things and answer some questions, because he's much better able than me to answer questions about this garden. And, Jenny, do you want to... This is, this is Don. <laughs> thanks, guys. Thanks, Eric. Yeah. I'm going to hand you out a couple of treats. This is Thank a uh, complimentary tote bag from Audubon, a garden tote bag. And then I'll give you some exhibit points. Um, this is the uh, Hummingbirds at Home Garden presented by Audubon. Thank you. We're really excited, as you'll see as we go along here. This is the first time we're going to sort of join the garden with the citizen science program for conservation. And um, Eric can correct me, but I think it's probably the first time that Pat we may have done that before. We're missing one person. He's coming. Thank you. Did you guys get back there? This is not a construction zone. No. Okay, only where we have a wall. Okay. Here's some uh, Thank you. exhibit points. Basically, the issue with hummingbirds right now is because we think due to climate change there's a mix, mis, excuse me, mismatch between when the flowers are blooming and the hummingbirds arrive in their breeding range. North America is the breeding range for hummingbirds and here in central Florida it's the ruby-throated. So what's happening is they're arriving but the plants that they need when they arrive are out of bloom. Either they're blooming early or late. So, um, and this is again um, we can contribute to the climate change. So what we're looking to do here is to show guests how they can create a hummingbird garden at home and then use the Audubon Citizen Science Program, which is called Hummingbirds at Home. And you can go online and do it or with an app, and I'll show you that. And what they do is once they create their hummingbird patch at home, and it can be a container garden or a full backyard garden, they report what they're seeing, um, what type of hummingbird, where it's at, and that data is going to go to the Audubon scientists, and this is nationally, and then they're going to look at that link between the flowers and the hummingbirds and hopefully be able to create some conservation efforts to save the hummingbirds. So it's going to, before kind of data goes from the citizens to science and there, this is the first time it's going to be a closed loop, which we're really excited about because it's actually going to come back to the folks here who did this with ideas of what they can do in their backyard to help the hummingbirds. And we're piloting it from here. Did everybody get a, a talking sheet? Yeah. Okay. Um, the garden's going to feature walk-through hummingbird gardens with some of the top attracting hummingbird plants. Um, everything's just starting to come up right now. What's really exciting is the festival correlates with the migration of the ruby-throated hummingbird, which is the common resident hummingbird here in uh, the eastern United States and Florida. And they actually arrive this week, and they will migrate north through the United States, the eastern United States, through the duration of the festival. And when the festival concludes, they will actually reach their uh, northern point in Canada. So it's kind of neat that it coincides with the festival. And like I said, we had the first sighting here just north uh, of the Magic Kingdom in Central Florida on Tuesday of the first arrival here in Central Florida. So the males are coming right now. They usually are followed in two weeks by the females, and then they immediately start getting territory for their breeding race. Are the uh, ranges genetic to the same ones, um, genetic lines in Central Florida, Central Florida, the same one in New yes. York, New York? Yeah, uh, they're kind of like the Purple Martins, which um, they're all flying right now, but these these houses right here are from the Purple Martins, and Martins, like the hummingbirds, will come back to the exact same location. When you think about it, the little guy is... Uh, that's the actual size. Of him. And he makes a 20 hour non stop flight across the Gulf of Mexico from the Yucatan as part of the migration. He gets to Florida, and he may end up all the way in Maine. So it can be anywhere from a 2,000 to 3,000 mile migration one way. The ones that stop here obviously have a little shorter. Hold that guy still in front of you while you're talking. They um, will come back to the exact same garden they were the year before. The males will claim the space as theirs, and for being only two ounces, excuse me, um, two grams, basically the weight of about three pennies, they're extremely defensive and protective of their territory. So they'll chase anybody and anything, as far as other birds, out of their territory. We're hoping that we get a, uh, a breeding pair 
in the garden. So we'll see here. We're going to monitor. We've actually got feeders set up in the back, the recommended nectar feeders. And we're going to have signage that's going to tell folks, one, how they can create a garden at home, two, you know, tips for attracting them, if they put nectar feeders out, what to do because it's, a, it's sort of a big responsibility because you can actually harm the hummingbirds by putting the wrong nectar out or not having the feeders clean. So we're going to give some tips like that. We're going to have some really attractive hummingbird um, identifications so folks can see the common hummingbirds in the United States and be able to identify them here in the garden. John, can we walk back and look at those? Yep, we'll take you around. Okay. Before we go back, I'm going to show you this. I'm going to present this as part of my talks in the festival center and when I'm out here in the garden, and I'm actually out here in select times during the week to talk to guests. This is an actual hummingbird nest. Uh, this was retrieved last fall after a storm over in Deland. Um, I have an idea. It's about the size of a golf ball, a little bit bigger than a... It's pretty rare to see these guys because they're so tiny and you would never see it up in a tree. The female will usually raise two nestlings in there and the eggs are about the size of a pea. So, and it's, she makes this nest out of spider webs and lichens. And you can see it's kind of stretched out. That's I think when it fell out of the storm, the tree during the storm. But it's actually designed with the spider webs and the lichen to expand. So this is actually what it looked like after the nestlings got big and kind of pushed it out because it's designed to kind of hug them real tight and as they get bigger they push it out. Mm -hmm. When she first made this it was much smaller and tighter in. Question, do, uh -huh. do they go in the bird houses ever? Hummingbirds don't. Okay, so those mm -hmm. are for a different... Those are for the purple martins which um, are the largest tree swallow or largest swallow in North America and they migrate from here to Brazil every year. And, and those, those we put up in 2000, this was a, a garden where we were showing guests how they can improve the habitat in their yard. We really put them up as a prop because it can take years for Purple Martins to find a house. Two weeks after putting them up, we had Martins. <laughs> so it's like, whoa, wow, we got lucky. And again, like the hummingbirds, they return to the same location every year. And I think last year we had about 20 breeding pairs of Martins. We'll yeah, take you it. come back and you'll see them, all the babies sticking their little heads out. Uh -huh. This is actually, a, I'll show you this real quick. We're going to have this. There's going to be a column in the center there with information. Folks are really excited about hummingbirds and they monitor these things all over. This is the migration report as of yesterday. Those white dots indicate sightings in the last three days. So that shows you that they're making their migration. That's true. We're going to post this every week so guests can see the progression as they move north. So if some a guest comes here from say Ohio or Michigan, they're going to be able to see how close the hummingbirds are to arriving in their backyard when they go home. Sounds